from the top of Sassafras Mountain, the highest point in South Carolina. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the GCN, GCN Show. <laughs> Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, why Dylan Van Baal's solo victory in Paris Bay is inspiration to us all that we might be good too. And we might be clutching at straws, but hear us out. We've also got some cool new tech and some tech that wasn't up to scratch, plus Zwift's new rules. And no, one of them isn't mandatory high checks down. Phew. This week, in the world of cycling, we learned how you can transport a nine meter long flagpole. Yes, Passy Widglen of Finland showing us something that I didn't think that I needed to know, if I'm being completely honest. However, now I really need to know just how long a flagpole is possible to tow by bike. One for Hank, I'd have thought. I think so. Meanwhile, Rich Payne has borrowed the new GCN Enduro Road bike for a GMBN video, although, he stuck nuke-proof stickers on the bike, which quite frankly, seems disrespectful. It does indeed, and I think that gives us license to be disrespectful back to Rich. Is it just me, Dan, or are those really small jumps? I'm pretty sure the bike is more capable than that, Rich. Give it to Lloydie, I'll show you how to do it. Yeah, Rich. Yeah. Talking of which, actually, you missed my video last week on the GSIN show, didn't you? I Getting did. rad. Getting rad. But the news is that we've got a brand new video and sick edit for you now. Firstly, I'm not sure that was an edit, was it? That was just a video. Um, but secondly, hats off to you. Super rad, dude. Cheers, yeah. mate. And now finally this week, we learnt that Dylan Van Baal's sixth win as a pro cyclist was only Paris-Roubaix, wasn't it? Yes, and another example that Roubaix is a race that can throw up surprises, even if, even if it was the 30th career win for Longo Borghini on the Saturday. Uh, she won the women's race in equally impressive style, didn't she? She did indeed, yeah. Now, there are a number of examples of riders who have surprised us with a win in Paris-Roubaix, aren't they? Not because they aren't super strong or super talented or great riders, but because they're not prolific winners. There are quite a few examples, as you there said. Are. Magnus Bagstedt, who you would have seen on the couch on Sunday and Saturday, it was his fifth win as a pro rider. Matt Heyman's 2016 triumph was his fourth and final victory as a pro, whilst for Frederic Guédon, the last Frenchman to win the race 25 years ago, it was just his second victory as a pro. And between those three riders plus Van Baal, they've got a total of 21 career wins from 72 collective years of pro cycling. Tadej Pogacar has taken that many wins in the last 19 months. Oh, good stat that, isn't it? Um, so what is it about Roubaix then and Van Baal's victory on Sunday that should give us all hope? We'll start with this, right? His victory is about perseverance. Mm. He's steady, yes. Van Baal, isn't he? Bloody powerful, yes. but steady. There's no Alaphilippe style swashbuckling, no Van Der Poel style wattage bazooka, no Lorena Vives style sprint. He just quietly gets on with his job, doesn't he, without fuss and without drawing attention to himself. Yeah, so it can give us all hope that even if we don't do our jobs with flair or panache, it doesn't mean that we can't be the best on our given day. Van Baal's odds of winning Roubaix on Sunday were 34 to one. Now for a rider who's finished second at Flanders, mm. second at the World Championships, and won last year's Dvastor Vlaanderen with a 50K solo attack, those odds were quite long, weren't they? Well, they were long, but I think understandable because I mean, Van Baal is not a rider who's at the forefront of my mind, at least, when it comes to naming the big three favourites for any particular race. But that is a bizarre thing, as you pointed out, when you list his results and realise just how consistent he is yeah, as well, a so rider. I think the reason for that okay, is because Van Baal rises to the top when it's been a very long, very hard race. So where others fade, he doesn't. Now, I heard it after Sunday, I can't remember where from, but as the turbo engines of other riders like Van Der Poel start to fade, Van Baal's monster V8 just keeps on going at the same level he started at. So it looked like, frankly, he just got faster and faster as he neared yeah. Roubaix's velodrome. That resistance it? to fatigue, really, It isn't is, it? yeah. The attribute that we talked about, incidentally, on a previous GCN show. You might not be the most explosive, most powerful rider, but there are many people who can just really knuckle down and rise to the top. Although I wonder if that's one thing that we can take no hope from. Van Baal's average power 
from Sunday's race. God. 307 watts actual average for five hours and 52 minutes, and that includes the neutralizer. Oh, that doesn't seem particularly achievable, does it? No, not um, really. No. But you are right, Roubaix is just definitely that kind of race, isn't it? Where just that consistent big engine mm. keeps on going. Some riders are just more suited to Paris-Roubaix diesel-style escapades than others. And perhaps that's you, because cycling isn't just about riding epic climbs. We need to remember that. No, it is the ideal race, it seems, to ride uh, for some riders, isn't it? It is. I wonder what my ideal race would be. Well, I can already see the headlines now. Sorry, now that you ask. Cy Richardson wins inaugural race from the cows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dan. I would about to say that you would win the race to the bar, but um, that would mean getting your wallet out, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. Yeah, thanks. That is true, because in my experience, the only race that you definitely want to be runner-up in every time is that race to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> through that. Uh, now, his win on Sunday also gives us all hope that hard work will eventually pay off. Van Baal has a reputation for being one of the most hard-working cyclists mm. out there. Something he's even said himself, actually, in a recent interview with L'Equipe. Uh, he said there that he thinks he's amongst the top three in the current peloton in that respect of hard work. Yeah, what a stat. Now, he didn't mention who the two others were. Presumably, though, we're thinking number one is Annemiek van Vluten. You thought so. Yeah, hard work eventually pays off, and Van Bala is testament to that. Smart hard work, we should say. Maybe my hard work in thinking of captions for the caption competition will one day pay off, so you <laughs> never know. Yeah, well, we shall find out later. <gasps> what are you doing? I don't, yeah, sorry, don't hold your breath. Oh, right. I, see what, I see what you did there. I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah. Um, I think your captions actually, Dan, are less about hard work and more about tenacity. Just never giving up. I can't give up. It's my, it's my job. Well, yeah, no, but it's inspiring to see how much effort you put in each week. And like Van Baalert at Flanders two weeks ago, maybe if you just keep plugging away, the stars like Tim Bishop, who has won more GCN water bottles than Pogaccio has won races, will eventually just come back to you as they kind of <laughs> fanny around inside the finish line and you just This is all amazingly poetic, I've got to say, so Never give up is, I think, basically what you're trying to say. Basically, it? yes, that's yeah. what we're trying to say. All uh, right, one final thing that we can all learn from Dylan Van Baal. If you are going to perform at your very best, do it when your job is on the line. Oof, yeah, true. Um, we are slightly jesting, of course, but Van Baal's Ineos contract is up at the end of this year, and there were already rumours circulating for Roubaix about rival teams looking to sign him. And you would imagine they will still obviously be very keen to <laughs> yes. sign him for the next year, two or three, probably even more so than before, but they're going to have to pay quite a lot more for him yeah. now, aren't they? Yeah, it's probably not that many times in life where you get like a million euro pay rise, is it? <laughs> but uh, that might be what he's just done for himself. Um, we should also say, by the way, that Elisa Longo Borghini, while less of a surprise winner and with a bigger Palmares already, is no less inspirational from the weekend for one very good reason. Now, she has had a torrid spring by her previous lofty standards and was apparently battling anxiety in the lead up to Saturday's mm. race. However, the team put faith in her and she over came her demons to land one of the biggest wins of her entire career. Well done. Absolutely. That is actually very inspirational for us all, isn't it? Anyway, we really hope you enjoyed our coverage of Paris-Roubaix on a fam at the weekend on GCM+. Plus. If you did, the good news is we have a lot more coming up this week. If you didn't, remember that you can get it on Catch Up. The whole thing. That's what you did, wasn't it? I did, yeah. Uh, our attention this week turns to hills and mountains instead of cobbles because tomorrow, Wednesday, it's La Flèche Wallonne and on Ooh. Sunday, the oldest monument of them all, Liège Baston Liège. Uh, territory restrictions do apply to both those races, but the good news is that we have acquired rights to be able to show the women's races that we've just mentioned in the USA, although unfortunately not the men's. Yeah, beyond that, the Tour of the Alps started yesterday and runs through to Friday. One of the most picturesque races out there, wasn't it? Yeah. Check out these images from stage one. Almost takes your breath away, doesn't it? Does Seeing those mountains. I think partly for me, that's because it serves as a reminder that the Giro d'Italia is also just around the corner. Whoa. A race that you can watch live on GCN Plus in all territories, except New Zealand. I'm so sorry, once again. Uh, it really is cruel, isn't it? Mm. But at least 
New Zealand looks like that already, doesn't it? Um, now, as with all the races we've just mentioned, uh, free to read on the GCN app. We will have maps, profiles, written previews of the Giro d'Italia, which starts in Hungary just two weeks on Friday. It's amazing how quickly the Grand Tours roll around each year, isn't it? Well, the whole season goes by in a blur eventually. You spend so long waiting for it, and then all of a sudden, you're back at the World Championships you in are. September. I, I felt slightly bereft on Monday, post Paris Roubaix. It must be said, actually. I was a bit like, oh, what am I going to do now? Did you not watch Ronda de Moose Grant in the first stage of the Tour of the Alps? I should have done, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> GCN Inspiration Now, you're part of the show where you get a chance to win one of three prizes by submitting your best and most inspirational cycling related photos to the GCN app. A reminder that all the products that people will win today are available over at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com and on that subject, we've got a 30% off offer at the moment. We have indeed on the GCN Aero Race Kit. Oh yeah, so uh, that's what, jerseys, shorts, uh, socks, I'm gonna win it, Vest. cap, wind vest as well. So, uh, so there you go. Yeah, we'll put a link to that in the description below and possibly even on the screen right now. Uh, in third place this week, getting themselves a GCN black and yellow racing stripe ass saver is Rustin Atkinson. After picking up my two sons from the child mine, there's just enough time for an evening ride on the virtually traffic-free roads of Northumberland. Nice. That is a sunset. super cool photo, isn't it? It's is great, isn't it? I, I yeah. Mean, along, along with me getting rad on the mountain bike at the moment, uh, oh, yeah. Jude is about two weeks from completely overtaking me, I think. Really? He started off about half as good and he's already caught up. He's about to go straight past. But it's great being out in the woods with your kids. Yeah, that is cool, isn't it? And also on virtually traffic-free roads as well. Mm. That makes a big old difference, doesn't it? So yeah, fantastic. Inspirational photo for many of us out there who've got kids. Uh, right, in second place, winning How to Cycle Further by Mark Beaumont, the uh, GCN Endurance book, plus a mug. A GCN mug, so you can uh, maybe sip some tea whilst reading it. Uh, anyway, the winner is Norbert. Uh, this is me riding up to the top of Mount Olymp. I think that's probably Olympus, maybe, in Cyprus. Uh, the Olymp, Mount of the Greek Gods. Fun fact, I like a fun fact. If you cycle to the top, you may be greeted by Cyclopedius, the god of cyclists, <laughs> son of Zeus and Dion, and be given eternally fresh legs and an additional 100 watts to your FTP. I well, you know you who what. was there recently? Who? Uh, Dylan Van Baal. Ah, there you go then. Uh, an extra 100 watts would do it, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it would for me, given he, the average power that Van Baal did at Paris Roubaix. I think I might need an extra 150. Yeah, well. Just to be safe. Yeah. Yeah, probably had a, had a bit Cracking more. photo, though. That does look a nice climb, doesn't it? It does. It's a long time since I've been to Cyprus. Like literally decades, but it, I remember the riding being amazing mm. out there. Uh, meanwhile, winner of first prize this week is Whippets Are Dogs. Uh, yes, they they will get themselves a decent cool red sh uh, short sleeve jersey and core cool fan bib shorts. Uh, nothing beats early morning mountain roads on quiet roads. Bit of a thing going on. This is a video. Let's have a look. That does look really nice, doesn't it? It looks. In I you said earlier about how nice it is to be on quiet roads. Yep. Traffic free there, pretty yeah. much. And look at the road surface as well. Yeah. I tell you what, if more people had access to roads like that, as quiet as that, with tarmac like that, I don't think gravel would be half as popular <laughs> as it is now, <laughs> yeah. if I'm completely honest. If it wasn't for traffic, yeah. we'd much rather ride on smooth roads. Yeah, well, yeah, not exclusively, but definitely uh, some of it. Now, that was a cracking vid. So yeah. uh, thank you very much. And a reminder that videos are very much accepted. So if you have one from a recent trip abroad, even from your local roads, make sure you submit it to the GCN app for a chance to win a prize next week. I have to be said, I'm intrigued by that um, username. Like if whippets, like what's the question? Whippets are dogs, but what are whippets if they're not dogs? I don't understand that. Can you can you elaborate? Let us know in the comments, comments below. And now it's time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we're going to start with news of new cycling <laughs> shorts. God, I love it when that happens. Like once every two years. Yeah, but it's great. Like four no? times in our history, <laughs> yeah. I think, isn't it? But it's the little thing, size, si, isn't it? It is, Dan. It really is, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, these new shorts are from Castelli, and they are the latest version of their aero shorts called the Free Aero RC shorts. Now, these have been in constant evolution since Castelli invented aerodynamic road kit all the way back in 2007. We say it all the way back. Like, it's one of those things, it's so obvious in hindsight to have aerodynamic road kit. You kind of think, what took everyone so long? Well, very true. 
yes? Uh, but the new ones are notable for a few major steps, like getting rid of any kind of leg gripper, which necessitated spending countless hours and iterations of shorts trying to find the right fabric that would naturally stay in place. Uh, they've also pared down the bib straps to a minimum as well. As you'd imagine, they are very aero, and I'd wager pretty comfortable as well. I'm looking yeah. forward to trying them. I'm looking forward to seeing whether the legs stay in place on your little stick legs. Well, yeah, especially nice. when I'm doing some tabletops. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true that. Now, also of note uh, about the new free aero bib shorts is that there's an image of Dan in the press release from 2009. Look, here he is. They're riding the early aero bib mm. shorts for, I can't quite make out what team that is. Well, no, let me take a closer look. Oh, that's the, that's the Cervelo test team, so oh, I think that was it? a tour oh, of Flanders. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, good times. Uh, now, more tech. Uh, Trek had a fleet of what looked like new Damanis being ridden by their teams at Paris Bay at the weekend. And in the case of Elisa Longo Borghini, to victory, of course. No yep. less. Cycling tips got up close and personal. Yeah, and Trek, we should say, haven't released any details at this stage. No, they, they haven't. Uh, but cycling tips picked out a few key differences, like no ISO speed decoupler which is Trek's method of increasing compliance, uh, that's not visible at the head tube anymore. Potentially, meaning that there is no decoupler up there, but mm. also they've abandoned the seat mast in favour of a traditional seat post. Yeah, almost traditional seat post. It's D-shaped. Oh, really. yeah, one of those. Um, now, you could say that the bike seems to work, given that Bolgini won on it, mm. but then Lizzie Diagon also won last year Watch. on the old one. Um, so I think we can safely say that tech definitely helps you win races, but it's not everything. Although, did you notice how many mechanical issues there were for the riders over the weekend? I can't remember so many punctures. No. Wout van Aert said afterwards, incidentally, that he rode four different bikes in the same race. Did you see that? Ooh, get you out, mister. <laughs> I've got four Cervelo S5s. No wonder you only finished second, mate. Yeah, if you just stuck with the one bike, you might have cleaned up exactly. at the end of the race. Yeah. Um, now, we joke, of course, but I do wonder if this year so many teams had swapped to tubeless paired with mm. super supple race tyres, thinking that they won't get pinch flat so you can run next to no pressure and get the benefits of no rolling resistance, only to find that when you ride pavé at race pace, you can definitely mm. still put holes in your mega flexible race tyres. Which definitely increases rolling resistance, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah. is definitely still not infallible, I think we can say. No. Uh, speaking of Paris-Roubaix, and specifically the women's race, Zwift are of course the title sponsor, as well as being the title sponsor of the Tour de France fam in July as well. It is now less than 100 days to Whoa. the new race, and Zwift have launched a new campaign called New Rules. Hashtag. Uh, now, before you say rules, we don't want no rules, it's worth listening to them. Um, and there are only five, yeah, so you don't have through. to wait long. Watch the fan. The more people that watch the sport, the faster it will grow, helping inspire new generations. Agree with that. Yeah, I do too. Uh, always keep it fun. The power and personality of the women's pro peloton is infinitely entertaining. Let's keep racing fun. Yeah, I agree with that. It's yeah. slightly on the side, but I also agree. Well, yes. I gave it some thought. Uh, next up, rethink what pro cycling looks like. Think of a pro cyclist, now think again. Let's aim to place the stars of the female peloton on an equal footing. Yeah, I definitely agree with yeah, that. Yeah, me too. A uh, ride like the entire sport depends on it, because it does. This is the biggest opportunity to grow cycling. Yeah, I think that's probably fair as well, isn't it? They're pretty I agree good. That. New rules, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the finish line is just the beginning. These racers are in it for the long journey, and so is Zwift. Well, that's good to know. I'm not. It's not like one you can agree or disagree with. It's just good to know that they're here for the long yeah, journey. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, thumbs up from us here, I think. Um, remember, you can, of course, watch the Tour de France fam on GCN+. Plus. In July. Happy days. Mm. Uh, talking of Zwift, the second Zwift social ride in our Global Bike Festival event uh, takes place tomorrow, the 20th of April, at 1800 GMT or 1900 CET. A uh, chance to ride and chat with Florian and Richie of GCN en Francais and Auf Deutsch and find out more about the Global Bike Festival. Everyone who competes in that ride or completes the ride has entered into the Zwift competition to win a VIP trip to the Global Bike Festival, plus unlock the GCN jersey in Zwift. To register, go to the link that's in the description below. Yes, in other news now, Cycling News reported that Jan Ulrich has just auctioned off a yellow, yellow excuse me, Pinarello that was created for him to ride triumphantly into Paris at the end of the 1998 Tour de France. However, as cycling history buffs will note, the bike went unridden because Marco Pantani ripped up the form book, ran amok in the Alps and rode into Paris wearing the yellow jersey instead. However, 
Jan Ulrich kept that particular bike that he didn't ride uh, until he just auctioned it off last week to raise money for Ukrainian children and in doing so raised over 40,000 euros, which wow. is amazing. That is amazing, isn't it? And equally amazing is that fellow German ex-pro cyclist Tony Martin, who auctioned off his Olympic medal from 2012 to also raise money for Ukraine, has had it given back to him. This was a brilliant story, wasn't yeah. it? So the winning bidder was a company called Fitline, who promptly rounded their donation up to 35,000 euros and then gave the medal back to a delighted Tony, saying it's back where it belongs. Yeah, what an amazing gesture from all of them, in fact. Ulrich, Martin, and the boss of Fitline yeah. as well. It's another thumbs up from us here. It is, isn't it? You know what? I was thinking that Ulrich keeping that bike that he never got to ride, it's kind of, it's kind of like a sort of, like a bittersweet sort of souvenir, mm. isn't it? It's like, well, here's the bike I would have had if I'd won the race, but apparently he didn't get a yellow Pinarello the year before when he did win the Tour de France. So he, I guess he could oh, always have pretended, couldn't he, that that yeah. was the one to commemorate his victory. I never kept any of my yellow bikes that I did, did you not? get to ride. No. no, that's a shame, isn't it, mate? <laughs> <laughs> hack forward slash bodge of the week now, and our first hack forward slash bodge this week comes from Graham Parkinson. I get sick of the front wheel turning sideways whilst cleaning on the stand. So years ago, I looked for a cheap alternative to a manufactured handlebar holder. This works great and can easily be removed to spin and clean the front wheel. I've been doing it for years to keep the front wheel straight while storing retro bikes. You know what? That's actually pretty cool, isn't it? A giant elastic band, but simple and presumably effective. It's not going to budge far, is it, with an elastic band? I'm going to, I'm going to give it a hack, 100% straight off the bat. You, Boom. You, you sound surprised in your own decision. Well, I am a bit, because when you look at the photo, you're like, what on earth? And then you go, actually, you know what? That could kind of work, yeah. And I like the fact that he's been testing it out for years, but has just decided to upload it to the GCN app. <laughs> he wants for to the, keep, uh, it, keep it to himself. Well, that's it. But no, share it with the GCN yeah. cycling community. All patents have been refused. <laughs> he decided he was going to send it in. Yeah, hack from me, uh, hack from Zion, hack from 82% of you. Oh, what a good start we're off to. Next one, we've got this one from Philski. I feel like this is not going to be quite such a good one when the first... Line is hold your horses, uh, read it all before you judge. Um, there's a lot to read, so I'm going to paraphrase. Basically, <laughs> so, yes, if we're not going to read it all, uh, well, so we, you can we, judge without all of it. We read it all, so you don't have to. Um, no, basically, <laughs> wanted an upright position to be more comfortable on the bike because he's spending a lot of hours on it delivering food. Um, couldn't get an upright stem because uh, he's got an odd standard headset, so uh, invented some reins instead. You don't, the first, as soon as you say reins on a bike... Yeah. So basically a piece of rope that allows you to turn <laughs> your handlebars. <laughs> it, the, my first thought is why don't you just go no-handed, given that you've got no controls with your reins, the important things like your brakes yeah. and uh, your gears and also something to stop you flying over the handlebars should you hit a pothole. So you might, you've got no advantage over going no-handed. No. Well, I, I'm definitely going bodge with this. Even yeah. though I did read the whole thing before judging. Yeah. Okay, bodge. Yeah. Uh, and 73% of you at home went for bodge there on we that go. one, unsurprisingly. Right. Uh, next up, NR Martin8798. Stick saviour. My shifter broke halfway through a 100k ride, but thanks to the GCN show, I had the stick hack or bodge up my sleeve. I wasted yeah. the radio in a manageable gear and got the remaining 50k's home in good time. Brilliant, love it. That's a hack from me. And a hack from me. Yeah. And a hack from 72% of you. Do you know what's also cool is you can take this hack to the next level by having a selection of stick sizes, couldn't you? It's obviously not like quite as instantly responsive as a, as a Shimano cable actuated shifter, but you get to the bottom of a climb, you stick a fatter stick mm. in there, boom! Get your easier gears. Well, we have to think back 100 years or so to the point at which they had to turn their wheel around to get a different gear. So Indeed. Finding different size sticks, <laughs> perhaps not as arduous as you might initially no, think. No, I like that. Uh, Jeff Wagen, or Jeff Wagen, uh, said uh, a specialised henge, wait a minute, SPZ henge. You know what that is? No. No idea. It might, it might be upholstery slang. Um, anyway, saddle reupholster. My saddle was torn apart, as you can see. It looked rubbish, actually. Um, but I like the saddle, so I reupholstered it. And wow. doesn't that look cool? That's very cool indeed. Absolutely yes. amazing. I, I applaud that wholeheartedly. Not only is it cheap, also stopped a saddle going to landfill. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hack from me? 
Ah, oh, hack from me. And it's a bodge from 10% of you, so the vast majority of you, understandably, saying that that one is a hack. Yes. Uh, next up, J. Calmus Try. Garage sink for cleaning chains and cassettes. Sounds good. I love a gold chain as much as Manon. However, they are significantly hard to keep clean and shiny. So my dad and I built a sink in the garage. After what? four trips to Home Depot, we tapped off the supply lines to the washing machine to get water to the sink, then built a drain system out of a bucket, an automatic pump, and a garden hose to send water back to the drain for the washer. Nice. We installed a shelf to hold an ultrasonic cleaner and I bought a cheap hub on Amazon that can be used to hold a cassette instead of trying to jam a wheel in there. No way. <laughs> you, not only have you done it, you've modified your sink. <laughs> That's you've crazy. hacked your sink. That is fantastic. Wow. I like that very much. I mean, there's plumbing talk in there that I can only, I mean, I can only dream <laughs> yeah. of being able to do that. But, uh, but yeah, I like that very much. As long as the washing machine still works. I mean, I mean the the installed hub to put your cassette on is genius. That is isn't absolutely it? amazing. Word. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, well, definite hack from both of us, and it's a hack from 92% of you. 8% said so that was a bodge. I wonder what would happen if you put a cassette and a chain in a washing machine, and then instead of like normal washing detergent, you put like muck off in. Well, so you wouldn't want to wash your clothes you, in it, but. I'll let you find out. I mean, you need to put it inside a fair amount of wrapping, wouldn't you, so as not to damage your own washing machine? Well, but you know, if you only wash cassettes in there, does it matter? I don't know. Oh, you want a dedicated washing well, machine? Well, I'm just thinking if your washing machine, train. maybe your washing machine doesn't wash clothes so well anymore, but it would do an, an excellent job of washing yeah. cassettes. You could buy just an industrial sized washing machine for your whole bike. That's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh, anyway, right, let's move on before we uh, spend any more time on that horrific bodge. Uh, Camille's wider ski. Camille's wider ski, maybe. Uh, my vinyl wrap skills. Now, this is intriguing. One of those crashes that scratches oh, horrible, a bit of your they? bike. In this case, is GRX shifters. They look, they look pretty scuffed. Tried paint, didn't work. So, carbon effect vinyl wrap. And there you go, that looks pretty good, wow. doesn't it? That does look. Oh, there's nothing worse, is there, than a, than a fairly new, or any bike actually falling over, particularly on the drive side. You lift it up to inspect the damage. Big scratch down the rear oh. derailleur, big scratch on the STI. Oh, no. oh, yeah. Easily done as well. So, uh, so yeah, that, I like that very much. A hack from me. And a hack from me. And a hack from... 88%. Sorry, I've already gone on, I couldn't see. I had to look at your laptop. Uh, the last one this week comes in from Nostromo. USB cable to the same. My brother, a college student in South Texas, had a plethora of cables and no bike shop to get spare parts for his commuter bicycle. Had a small situation on his front fender as well. My brother's bike, not mine, cassette makes me want to cry. <laughs> yeah, what you need is a washing machine for that cassette. It will come up <laughs> looking like new. Um, that's quite cool, isn't it? I'd never really thought of using a USB charging cable to uh, fix bits of your bike. I mean, it's a bit like a zip tie, but um, probably less not sharp. Well, not as good, I'm going to say. Well, yeah, just, okay. just put a zip tie on it or get a replacement bolt. Yeah. And you can never have enough USB charging cables, can you? I mean, like, there's... Oh, well, I, I've got too many. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. It's like, what have I not with these bikes? You serious? Could you lend some to me, please? I can do, yeah. Yeah, I've got, like, a whole bag of, of, of USB cables that I have no need for, really. Oh. I'm a bit short on USB-Cs at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's not very interesting, but there we go. Um, no, I like that. I think that's quite cool. Um, and I do, I kind of prefer well, it to zip ties. I'm you? saying bodge. Oh, no way. You're going to hack for that, are you? Even though, as you've just spotted, 23% of people said that was a hack. Yeah. Yeah, I, I admit, it might seem a little bit generous to give it a hack. <laughs> I just like the fact that he's, he's fixed it with what he has lying around. You've been swayed by general opinion, haven't like you? It, yeah. Peer pressure. No, but it's like a stick in your rear mech, isn't it? It's, it's what you've got to hand that allows yeah, you to keep home. riding your bike. You, 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 was that, well, actually we didn't decipher whether it was uh, whilst he was out. I just assumed that he'd done, just found the USB cable at home, didn't have it with him. No, yeah. I d it so does seem like... You do that at home. It is a bodge, right? We spent Especially a long time on that side. Well, it also seems like there's a perfectly good bolt just, uh, <laughs> just, just a centimetre away. Handily mm. placed. Yeah, OK. Uh, right. Don't forget that next week's Hacks and Bodges are already on the GCN app for you to vote on, but you can get involved by uploading your own to the app, ready for a couple of weeks' time. 
Couch in competition time now, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you've got to do is put a witty caption in the comments section down below that relates to a photo we will give you shortly. Firstly though, it's results time. It course. is, and the photo last week was this one on the Amsterdam Gold Podium of Michal Kwiatkowski, and our winner is Calvin Mills. Actual footage of a 138 centimetre Dan Lloyd drinking a regular sized beer. <laughs> I like that. You can tell that's a fake though, because if that was actually 138 centimetre size, you drinking a, a pint of beer, there'd be a grin that you can see, wouldn't there? Like a <laughs> massive, massive grin. And uh, Kukowski looks a bit serious there, doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, anyway, this week's photo was actually screenshotted by Richard Scott from last week's GCN show. Uh, the content on GCN is always premium. Maybe this should be next week's caption competition. I think that's an excellent photo for caption competition. Well, as I'm in it, maybe you should get us started, Si. Oh. You shirked your responsibilities. Tenacity is not paying off this no, week, Dan. The right. hard work won't pay off at all. No, it won't, okay. Manon Lloyd and Dan Lloyd get a fright when they compare their family trees. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, see what I, I did there. Find, find out that Manon's my mum. <laughs> Of course not. I keep getting told that I'm a dad. Uh, anyway, yeah. do your best in the comment section just down below <laughs> with your captions and one of you will win a bottle next week. We will shortly be letting you know what's coming up on GCN this week, but first up, our favourite comments from last week and a continuation from Campus Competition from Joe F. Great job as always. I always enjoy the father and daughter episodes from last uh, week's GCN show. You know what? I put that one in from Joe F, but I could have put about 40 <laughs> other comments in from various different people, all making the same How old point. is Memon? 20. Five-ish, yeah, four-ish? Just about, I guess. I've been a young father though, wouldn't I? 16. Well, yeah, but I think it's the fact that you look old. <laughs> <laughs> so te she, technically she, it was possible. She but... told me I was having a midlife crisis last week after the mountain bike video. Well, I think that's what we're all thinking, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> underneath the Paris uh, Recon, or Recon, should I say, with SD Works with Manon. Andy Fairchild, great video. Thanks, Manon and GCN. Love to see more content highlighting women's racing. Both Paris-Roubaix races were great last year, but Lizzie winning the first women's race was the high point of the whole season for me. Incredible when you look back at that. It's 80 kilometer solo attack in yeah. any race with any gender, pro or not. Unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I just I wanted to remind Andy and everyone else out there that there are so many amazing women's races to watch on the GCN app, aren't there? Yeah, there on GCN, are. Uh, on GCN Racing. Yeah, uh, I think so we've now secured, we're very close to securing every single one of the women's world tour races at this point and a whole host of others in between. So yes, there's a lot of women's racing to watch on Absolutely. GCN Absolutely. Yeah. Did uh, Manon strike a nerve when she said you were having a midlife crisis? You didn't seem to find it so funny. <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we have discussed when midlife comes previously. I think I probably am there now, but um, whether or not it's a crisis. Well, it will be when I'm in hospital, I guess. I think because you're still wearing Lycra, I don't think it counts as a midlife crisis. I think if you bought like all the mountain bike kit, then you'd be having a midlife oh, well, crisis. Well, that, obviously, in that clip at the start of the show, I did have baggies on. At least they were on me. <laughs> I'm not sure they meant <laughs> that to That was Lycra, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, under the motor pacing video, uh, Connor being taller than the car probably cut down on the aero advantages. <laughs> uh, Fernando Gutierrez are making a very good point. Yes. Uh, David Harper, but weird, it's normally an Audi right up to the back wheel of the cyclist, <laughs> not the other way around. Uh, like Connor's that. also been out to France to do his Roubaix uh, uh, Recon with Adjie Desir. Uh, honestly, GCN's best video ever. My arms and legs were sore just watching Connor. Legend. That came in from Dave Gorman. And Flying Turtle put, at the end there, it looked like you were about to change your name from Connor Dunn to Connor Dunn. But man, you are such a trooper. You put it in all perspective for us mortals just how tough this race actually is. Well done indeed. That yeah. came in from Flying Turtle. Cracking video, that one, absolutely cracking. I've just got to say though, was it GCN's best video ever? I'm not entirely sure. Was it better than you and Matt doing impressions back in 2014? That's, that's something. <laughs> Yeah, we used to do them again, don't we? We do, actually, yeah. yeah. Um, or Faces of Cycling, which is uh, a little-known GCM video that went live for about 48 hours before it was taken down again. Yes, 
think you might be able to find it if you search hard. Oh, yeah, there are. There are one or two secret GCM videos yes. out there. Don't post them online, though. No, please don't. All right, coming out this week on Wednesday, how to change gears on a road bike. Uh, we haven't done this for so many years, and of course, in that time, so many new people have come into the sport. And I think we all forget how daunting the whole sport of cycling is, whether it's getting used to tactics in races, what's going on there, or indeed getting to grips with handling your bike and tuning and maintaining your bike. It can be very confusing. So if you know somebody that's just got into road biking, uh, let them know about that video because they might find it pretty useful, especially with the updates of all the different gears and how they work in the last few years. Yep. Uh, on Thursday, super secret, super cool new bike launch, which I know nothing about. Ooh, it is good. So do make sure you check it out on Thursday. Yeah, it's very good indeed. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I should check it out. Yeah, do. Um, then on Friday, can you beat a superbike with a public hire bike? Uh, Hank and Manon went racing around the streets of our local city to uh, find that one out. And then on Saturday, what happens when you race a giant bicycle? Uh, and you put a giant on the giant bicycle as well. This is Connor on um, <laughs> El Alto, which uh, you remember from a video a few months back. Um, do make sure you check that one out. It should be very good fun. And then Hank, um, Hank's tackling an epic ride on the Amazon bike, isn't he? Oh, is he? Yes, just because uh, because he's Hank, and because he can, <laughs> basically. Actually, if you've got any ideas for Hank challenges, I mean, he genuinely is asking all the time what he can do, isn't he? Well, flagpole. That's what I would see. Nine meters is the current record yeah. of towing a flagpole around. Um, but you can leave your suggestions in the comments below. Anything that involves him taking his top off, he really likes, doesn't he? <laughs> Yeah, that is true, actually. He really does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Thank you all for watching very much indeed. We will, of course, be back this time next week with the next episode. We're creeping up towards 500, aren't we? I know. I keep thinking about the big 500. That'll be a point to have a midlife crisis at. <laughs> 500. You know, that's, uh, that's an eighth of the average human life, 500 weeks. Mmm. Well, nine. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even say old man then, that's yeah. what I meant to say. You've just watched it happen in real time. Blimey. All uh, right, well, well done if you got this far through the show. We'll see you next week. <laughs>